Good morning, Modern Steaders. This morning's video is going to be all about starting our tomatoes and growing our tomato plants in soil blocks in the house. We've been getting a ton of specific questions about our growing system and how we're doing it. So I'm excited. I am encouraged to hear how many people are growing their own who are getting ready to start their own inside. That's very encouraging and exciting. We'll be eating BLTs with a lot of modern steaders this summer. So let's dive in and let's talk a little bit more about our tomatoes and how we're growing them. There's been a lot of people making comments about our lights being too low. They were lower, but I was leaving them low to let the little guys catch up. We have a few of them here and here. Yesterday, I raised the lights up, believe it or not, two to three inches, and there was room between the light and the plants. And they have grown immensely. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise our lights up two lengths. Believe it or not, I did this yesterday and the plants are already touching the lights again. There. Mr. Figaro, you're making too much noise with the chickens over here. It's hard for us to hear. The grow light that we're using here on these tomato plants is a regular fluorescent shop light set up with T12 grow light bulbs. And over here we have our LED strip lights. I have not been thinning my plants right away. What I do is I let them grow up a little bit and when I find one plant that's better than the other, like this one's growing nice and straight and the base on this one doesn't look as nice. So we're gonna get rid of that one. Over here, it's kind of a 50-50. It's not a lot healthier, but it is. And I think if by pulling this one out now, that one's gonna grow a lot faster. But I hate thinning them too soon, just in case one or the other doesn't make it. The grow light setup that we have is not the most expensive setup. It's just the most affordable setup that I can find. I know there's stronger lights out there, but I don't want to focus our plants on growing them inside. The grow lights are just to give them a good start, and that way we can have a good healthy plant started inside. So I'm not gonna, you can go out and you can spend hundreds of hundreds of dollars on good high quality lights if you want. These are not them. These are strong enough lights to do the job that we need them to do. Let's talk transplanting these seed starts. We're not gonna be putting these seed starts directly into our garden from these soil blocks. You can do either one or two things. Last year, we bought these bigger pots on Amazon. See if I can find a link for them. If I can, I'll put them in our store on Amazon. And we put the soil blocks in here and added more soil. And they had all of this area to grow. And our plants, wish I had pictures of them. This year, I need to get better with taking pictures of things and saving the pictures. I'm gonna say our plants were a good 12 to 24 inches tall with a nice thick stalk. The pots worked good. When we took them out of the pots, they were root bound. They could have, believe it or not, used to have gone into a bigger pot. So this year, what we're gonna do, this winter, I made this large soil block maker. You want to watch that video or see how to make one yourself i'll put a link to that video right here but what we're going to do is we're going to transplant our medium soil blocks into a larger soil block that we're going to be making and a lot of people have been asking how do you know when your plants are ready to go into the next size container or soil block so the way i determine if my plants are ready to go to the next soil block which these ones are, believe it or not. See all these little root fibers? That's all the roots growing out of your soil block. So this is telling me, all right, the plant has used up the space 
inside of this soil block and it's time to go to the next one. The other really cool thing about the soil blocks and seeing the roots like this is now our plant is ready to go to another soil block or go to the garden and get directly planted in whatever we're planting it in. And these roots are gonna just keep growing. Where if they're in a pot like this, the roots get stuck. When they hit the wall of the container, they turn back around and they get root bound, they call it, because if you look, it's almost like a ball. They get balled up and they'll grow into a circle. So the roots don't grow out easier. And when you're, that's why you have, sometimes you have the transplant shock is the plants are in new soil, but they don't know, hey, my roots can grow. They're still bound up. Where the soil block, the ends come to the end and they grow out. And sometimes they'll grow into the other soil block. Sometimes they'll just grow into the tray. But that's good. So when we go to transplant them, they're going to be ready to take that new soil on, the new nutrients from the new soil, and they just grow amazingly. I'm going to need to transplant our tomato plants. I'm not going to do it in today's video. Sometime this coming week, we're going to be transplanting these and finally be able to use the large soil block maker. So I'm excited for that. So keep your eye out for that video. But I'm going to show you one other trick to encourage your roots to grow down. Let's go over here and I'll show you. Now this is one of the reasons we use the plastic trays without holes, is we can flood the tray. I know you, normally when I'm watering, you see me with a sprayer, and we're spraying the top of them. That's when they're small, and when they're just starting to turn into plants. Once they get bigger, if we flood the tray, the whole thing flooded. And I mean flood the tray. That water in a matter of minutes is going to be wicked up by our soil blocks. You can see it's basically just in the grooves. When I flooded it, there's about a half inch of water in there. Same with this one. What that does is it makes the soil blocks wick the water up from the bottom. So the pot that's going to have the most water is the bottom. And that encourages the plant's roots to grow deeper. You want that for a few reasons. You want to have good deep roots. And if you're just misting the plant, the water staying up high mostly. Some's going to seep down low, but the majority of the water and the wetness is going to be up high. So it's not going to encourage those roots to grow deep. It's going to encourage surface roots which isn't a good thing, especially if you garden with a deep mulch, back to eating garden. You want to encourage deep root growth. And there's a few reasons for that. One is it makes a stronger plant. The second is it makes the roots grow down deeper and encourages a better growing plant, but less watering. And you don't want to water your plants. The more you water your plants, the more the roots are going to stay up high. You might be watering your plants, and they might be looking good and healthy, but you're not encouraging the roots to grow deep. And the deeper the roots go, the more nutrients those plants are going to have because they're going deep down into the soil, going down into the resources, and pulling up what your soil has down there for them, and then sucking it up, putting it into the fruit, whatever the pot is that you're going to eat, and then in return, giving us more nutrients. So if you do, deep bedding, back to Eden garden, or just mulch your garden, you're going to get that and you're not going to need to water your garden, which is amazing. So if you have a drought, you don't have to worry about it. You might look at the dirt and go, oh, it's dry. But deep down, it's damp, and there's moisture down there, and your plants are going to grow. So by starting our plants this way and teaching the roots to grow down and encouraging that from the beginning, it gives you a better plant and a better garden and more nutrient dense food. It's just amazing. I'm going to talk more in upcoming videos of how we're going to plant them, but I'm going to touch on it real quick because I know there's a lot of people that are in a growing zone that they're going to be planting their garden sooner than we are. So two more things I want to touch on before we end the video. One is you want to plant calcium in with your tomatoes when you plant them in the garden. So if you have a good source of quality eggshells, you can start saving up your eggshells and baking them in the oven to dry them out. And then you can put some eggshells in each hole when you plant them in your garden and they'll have a good source of calcium while they're growing. You could also do 
oyster shells. That's another good one. So just be thinking about that. How am I gonna get calcium to my tomato plants? If you have tomato end rot or blight, most of the time that's due from an insufficient source of calcium. So if you can start the hole off with calcium, the plant should have the calcium while they're growing. And then you'll have less battles you're fighting throughout the growing season. The other thing, we bring you in close. Hopefully I can get the camera to focus. <clears throat> but you have these little knobs on your tomato plants. When you plant your tomato plant, you should plant them so you bury the first leaves or right up to the first leaves. All those little nubs will grow roots. And by planting your tomato plants deeper in the ground, they're gonna have more roots. The plant's gonna get stockier and hardier. So if the wind's blowing, it's not gonna blow the tomato plant over. It's just gonna make for a stronger plant right from the beginning. I hope the chicks haven't been too noisy for you in the video. They're right over there. Fingers crossed we'll be getting those outside this coming week. Exciting times here in the homestead come springtime. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If I didn't answer all of your questions, leave them in the comments down below. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.